Help me to stay competitive against the big multinational corporations by subscribing to this channel, hitting the notification bell, liking the video and maybe leaving a comment in the comment sections below. Thank you very much and enjoy the video. Greetings Freethinkers, welcome to the Hogcast. Okay, on this episode we are discussing changes in the British Parliament which is going to see for the first time halal food served in the Houses of Parliament. Now we all know why this is happening and we also know that in what direction this tends generally to flow in that such as you take British schools and British hospitals and other institutions that originally started serving halal food about a generation ago, whereas now halal is pretty much the only option available in hospitals, in schools, etc, etc. As we go on, I will show you some things. Now, I haven't done a video in a couple of, uh, a few days actually, almost a week, because the news cycle has been stuck on the the C virus situation I have to be careful in what I'm saying because the YouTube algorithm really doesn't like discussions in regards to that particular thing so I'm sorry I haven't got any exciting footage from Greece for you or anything like that but I'm afraid to say the what people are sending me is pretty much universally the what's coming out of China situation. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the Labour MP who has been championing this and has finally got her own way. Okay, so Zara Zoltana is the MP. She's, of course, um, a member of the faith herself. And she is very happy to announce that for Parliament to represent the people, it has to be accessible to everyone. Now, it doesn't mean you have to serve halal meat to and kosher, but this is more of a halal drive here. But it doesn't mean you have to serve halal meat just for it to be accessible to anyone. Like, for example, a mosque. I remember on a school trip, I, I was taken to visit a mosque when I was a child. The mosque it will only allow ha anything halal inside the mosque, okay? But it was accessible to us. We were taken in there. You yourself, if there's, I'm sure there's will be a plethora of mosque open days. They have them all over the place which is designed for people to um, get to know their local Muslim community. I'm sure that you will be allowed access to your local mosque without bringing a bacon sandwich in there. They won't have to serve you bacon in order for you to attend or to have access. So in my opinion, that makes this a straw man argument right off the bat. Parliament has done more more than enough to be accessible to people of the Jewish and particularly the Muslim faith. Um, so, in my, like I say, in my opinion, this is a strawman argument. So I'm really pleased, she continues, that after at uh, Charlotte 2153 and I call for it, Parliament will be more open to Jewish and Muslim people. Again, a straw man argument, it was always open to them to begin with. We don't have to suddenly start serving your food for it to be open. It's funny how things always seem to flow in one direction for diversity and inclusivity and more openness always seems to be us making way for you whenever it comes to openness and diversity and inclusion it never seems to be you adapting to the host culture it's always us giving way to other people and a lot of people are noticing this and by framing your blatant desires in a straw man argument such as well to serve halal would mean that for parliament to be more open and more inclusive they have to serve halal that's not the case how open and inclusive is your average mosque? Like I said, I've been there as a school child. Okay, I'm still, I know there are mosque open days here in Peterborough. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that I wouldn't go if they're not serving bacon sandwiches. I could still go there. It's still accessible for, to me, and it's the same with Parliament. We've had Muslim elected Muslim officials for quite some time now in this country. The first elected Muslim official wasn't just yesterday. It's perfect, and, and tourists as well. You've got to remember, Parliament's a place where a lot of people go for, for the purposes of tourism. 
It's open to everybody. We don't need to change the, the menu to become halal just to make it quote unquote more accessible. Now, the type of things that people worry about are just this type of thing we're about to go over here. Now, these, I've got two articles for you to go over out of the uh, Daily Mirror. They both are. Now, if they're coming from the Daily Mirror, which are both left-wing rags, then you must know, that's why I chose these, okay? I didn't want to give you a Sun article or a Daily Mail article for then people to say, oh, well, he's quoting the Daily Mail, he's quoting the Sun. The Daily Mirror is a left-wing article, and if they're bringing it up, it should demonstrate to you that there are a lot of parents out there who are quite worried about this type of thing because at the end of the day you know what happens we've all seen those school the, those articles where a um a western uh, dinner lady at schools accidentally gave a muslim pupil pupil pork and the whole muslim volcano erupts and everyone's out in the streets and there's fire everywhere and you, you know the whole story the only thing that can settle it down is a big lump sum payment of taxpayers money etc etc well if we really do live in an equality driven society surely it must work the other way around as well for example these schools as i'm about to show you in these articles here so this school Aureus School, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Aureus or Aureus School in Oxfordshire has a strict policy to create good habits that will become lifelong routine. Sounds good enough, okay, on principle. Doesn't everything these authoritarians come up with, they sound so great, don't they, on paper. But when you get into the nitty gritty, you see things aren't as, aren't as cut and dry. The school has been branded like a dictatorship after it banned all packed lunches and only serves water and halal meat. The article continues that packed lunches are banned and pupils and staff sit down to eat together in a canteen together to, with an emphasis on eating healthily and socially. Bearing in mind that halal meat um, comes from animals that have been slaughtered without any anaesthetic they are faced east towards Mecca and uh, uh, an Islamic prayer is said over the animal before the animal's um, throat is ritualistically cut and they are left to bleed out. I've seen a lot of videos taken from the few good animal rights activists out there who actually are not ideologically driven and can differentiate between western practices and eastern practices and they've actually filmed what the usually in turkey that they filmed these animals in their last moments and it's horrible i wish i could show you it here you could find it yourself but um i, I couldn't show you it on youtube it wouldn't be I, I in my opinion it wouldn't be allowed so apparently for a healthy and socially acceptable lifestyle at this school you must drink only water and eat halal meat. And it's not the only school that's doing this. Okay, and like I say, it's the second article from the mirror, which is left wing. So before anyone calls me out on being, on being biased or anything I'm not, I always choose or I try to choose from articles from the other side of the aisle so people can't accuse me of being biased. And that's that really annoys them, trust me. So we've got another school here. A parents launch petition to stop their school serving only halal meat. And this one is Wolseley Infant and Junior School. A row has broken out after parents launch a campaign for a school not to serve only halal meat. Hundreds of pair of people have signed a petition objecting to dishing out meat killed in the traditional Islamic method, which I outlined to you a moment ago. And where are the RSPCA? It seems to me like if you, if it seems to me if you are belonging to a religion, and generally the more violent the religion, the better, you can get away with anything, really, anything at all. And and these these groups that should exist to check your behaviour, as long as you belong to a religion that has a lot of people to it and are willing to put their put their fists where their mouth are basically people will leave you alone no that that's one of the sobering hard lessons i seem to have learned from life because they seem to be able to do just anything with impunity 
Well, friends, I tried to find um, a link to something that someone had put me onto in regards to allegedly Arabs or people from Arab countries had been funding the RSPCA, and that is why the RSPCA in Britain has been notoriously quiet in regards to the virulent spread of halal torture, um, sorry, halal slaughter and the fact that they remain entirely silent on it. However, I haven't been able to find any link myself um, which would support that. I'm not saying there isn't one, I just say I haven't, I haven't found it. If you do know where one is, by all means, let me know in the comment sections below. I will leave the two articles linked in the description box below, the, the two mirror articles so you can look for yourself and look things over if you so choose thank you for watching i apologize for not having any footage for you today from greece or elsewhere but like i say the news cycle has been stuck at the moment and i wanted to bring my viewers some content so i decided to run with this thank you i'll see you in the next video and don't forget to like subscribe hit the notification bell and share and i'll see you in the next one guys thank you goodbye